I'm Frank and Pierre. Uh, I've been involved in Debian for a uh, few years. I'm maintaining some packages. Okay, I'm Franklin Piat. Uh, I've been involved in Debian for a few years. I am uh, very interested in how we can improve the support of our users, um, either through documentations, tools, um, everything. Um, one, one of the, one of the topic is area where we can improve the current situation. In my opinion, was uh, whichever. Do it. Can you hear me now, or does the audio team feel like? Hmm? Yep. This way. Thank you. Um, so I think we can improve the way we uh, um, the experience for our user when they have to upgrade their distribution. Um, uh, um, I'm currently uh, I'm here pro going to present a project I've uh, designed. Uh, it was basically ready for Lenny, but since I had no feedback by then, um, I haven't um, tried to get it inside Lenny. Um, uh, but it's probably going to be uh, in squeeze. Um, I expect this talk to really to get some feedback from you. So if you have any questions, comments, don't hesitate uh, to interrupt me. Or I think we should have plenty of time to discuss uh, at the end anyway. So um, first of all, for a user, from a user point of view, um, the first thing the user, user is doing is to install a system. Uh, we have good tools for that. Um, Debian installer, not to name it. Uh, we have um, the bootstrap or many solutions which are very effective. Of course, when we Debian release a new version, a new stable version, uh, the user wants to get a new version. And Debian has an infrastructure f to perform this upgrade. Uh, namely, DPKG uh, and APT uh, uh, suite of tools. And those use uh, post installation, uh, pre installation, and so on scripts to perform the migration from the current package to the next package. Also, we also already provide inside the each package some documentation for the changes introduced in the new package, as you all know, namely uh, the news.debian file. Um, it's up to the maintainer to provide all the useful information for the user. Also, during the actual migration of a package, uh, we have the possibility to prompt the user for, uh, for the about question regarding those upgrades. Finally, we have the release notes, which uh, has information on, typically on the problem that the user could encounter when he is upgrading the system. And overall, um, we have, I think, something which is already uh, very good uh, to help the user migrate their, their systems. So, what's the problem? Do we have a problem? Um, The first thing is that um, we are a distribution. We, Debian provides software which is, for most of them, not built inside Debian, but outside Debian. And anyway, like every software, there are some new features, uh, some features which are discontinued. Um, unfortunately, we try to avoid them uh, regression, which usually uh, are fixed before the release. Um, what kind of other problem can the user face when he's upgrading the system? It's something like local configuration which uh, basically breaks what the, the, the upgrade scripts expect. Or some user who have made some choice very, to very really customize his, the configuration of his system. Also, some package introduce some new behaviors. Um, 
that happens. Um, and also Debian can choose to use a different uh, version, a different program in different release. So that's the kind of things we can change and that has to be handled during the, during the upgrade. Um, and there's one thing which could be considered as a problem is, uh, I mentioned before that we provide a news.debian news file to provide information about what's going to change in the package. But obviously, um, since this news file is contained inside the new package, you can only read it more or less uh, when you are started to migrate. So what's needed? What can we do to improve the situation? I think one uh, aspect what really interests the user is basically to have some predictability, um, to be able to plan and prepare his upgrade. I mean, the user is clever. He has read the uh, documentation we provide, especially the release notes, but we can help him further. From the user's perspective, um, upgrading a system basically is three steps. Uh, the first step is he should get the documentation, release notes specifically, and um, make sure he reads all of it, it's reading all of it. In large companies, he's probably going to make some, uh, uh, to have some, um, computers to test the upgrades and make sure he can upgrade the system without breaking the production. But uh, this is also part of planning a migration. The second main step for upgrading a system is obviously to actually upgrade the system. As I said before, we have some tools for that and, um, okay, APT get upgrade, you change the source list, APT get update and all this one. And finally, after an upgrade, um, um, since there have been some change between two stable distributions, uh, maybe Debian says, okay, uh, we don't use syslog anymore, we use rsyslog anymore, but uh, of course we want to be conservative when we upgrade the system, so we are not going to force the user to change the system, the, the syslog, for example, during the upgrade. Those kind of uh, changes are not performed during the migration, the upgrade. However, they are documented in the release notes. So we can expect the user to, re to read the release notes. Also, some packages are not used anymore and could be removed. These things are maybe not always removed. So you know, it's all those kind of small things that we can help the user um, feeling more comfortable uh, that after he has upgraded his system, he has something very similar to a freshly installed system. So I've designed a tool, which is actually a very simple one, uh, which focuses on the first, on, on the two steps uh, I've mentioned above. One is what we do before the upgrade and to warn the user of what he's going, what we'll have to take care of. And the other part is after upgrading your system, what should be done? So we can have a look. Um, we can actually. Yes. Uh, yep. Is that? We'll try this one. So here I'm running from a Git repository. Of course, most users will just use, um, you know, the, from the package installed. And basically, it's going to perform a few tests. Uh, and here we are in prep. I'm going to, hold on, I think that's, Yeah. 
So invoking the program just goes like this. And we can see he has performed um, various tests for the system. The idea is to help and provide information about uh, the status. Actually, the system here is not very, very interesting, but basically it's a modular tool where you can just have plugins to test uh, anything which is interesting for the user. Um, for example, uh, I'm currently uh, working on a tool to detect the package that are no longer available in the next release. This is kind of tricky, actually. Uh, also, we have to make sure that the user don't have some settings in uh, APT that would prevent the upgrade from working properly especially doing APT pinning. We can do a check for our fan system. We can uh, we make sure the user haven't, uh, doesn't currently have some uh, uh, package that are on hold. Uh, we also make some tests um, to make sure all the package are currently uh, installed. We don't have pending installation and stuff like that. And it's also performing a few tests. Uh, this is, those tests at the bottom are really those which are documented in the release notes. Uh, and we duplicate, in some way we duplicate the work. The documentation of the tool clearly states that the user should not expect to have some tests which are 100% accurate. We have some both false positive, we have some false negative tests but that's probably a good, good start to help. Here I've run the, so I've run the script in um, what I've called human mode. So there's another mode which uh, um, is intended to be uh, easily run on a large set of machines and to be able to collect those information and just to grip the files. Uh, so each file is, is, you know, the usual log stuff. And on this test machine, I, have, I don't have any uh, very broken things, so we don't have big errors, but here it just says, okay, we have a file here which doesn't, which contains some stuff which are not standards. And this is because I'm getting some files from the hosting company I'm using for this test machine. Yeah. Right, right, yes. Uh, actually, what we... Uh, what I have done so far... Um, is that when, when something is... Uh, okay, the question wa was... Um, Lynchan currently provides uh, some help about the error messages. Is that, yeah. And what I've done is that for each test, uh, I recommend to, to have a, a link to the release notes where uh, it's documented. Um, but actually, it's true that not all the, error of, all the tests are, comes from the release notes, so we need to do something about it. Um, that's a good idea. Well, you're going to have to, um, this is going to be a difficult job to synchronize this with the release, right? Because you basically want to have the release notes done, and then there is the last upload of Upgrade Advisor, and then we release, ideally. 
um, maybe it's possible to actually have the release notes in the package or like have that data in the package so you don't have to have links. You know, we have that island test thing. Um, when I'm going to upload it, maybe we will actually merge it inside the release notes. I should have talked with uh, the release notes maintainer. Cool. Yeah. Probably. Uh, Colin, what other hand you? Yeah, so uh, executable release notes were, uh, sorry, executable release notes were, uh, was one of the ways that I uh, tried to describe things when we were doing Update Manager in Ubuntu, which is kind of a similar idea. And uh, one thing that I don't feel we did well in Ubuntu that we should learn from here is that we didn't do well at decentralizing things. So uh, the... All of the update, all, all of the upgrade logic, all of the special cases that you have to deal with, are all centralized in Update Manager. And the result of this is that the Update Manager maintainer is a hell of a time sorting through all the bug reports and has to keep up with the entire distribution and all the weird shit that people do. Um, it it does seem like an extremely good idea not to duplicate that and to try to design something that would allow packages to, that, that would allow individual packages to drop in something saying when you are upgrading from Lenny to Squeeze we need to do this weird thing that's not you know that's not expressible within the standard package system. Uh, maybe we need to prompt the user in an unusual way. Maybe we need to make sure that some other package gets installed, and that's something that could be that could be uh, evaluated before the uh, package is upgraded by uh, inspecting the new things that have that have been downloaded. Um, is uh, it, it, it looks like everything's centralized in Upgrade Advisor at the moment, but if that's not the case, that'd be great. Um. It's designed in a modular way. Uh, oh, fuck. Uh, well, actually, each plugin is. Uh, I'm not completely happy with the way it's designed, but um, it's. Meant it's hosted currently on Collab Main, um, and uh, it's pluggable, so anyone can just come. I will see later. Uh, just mm. any maintainer can just drop, could drop a, a, a plugin inside the directory or. Uh, I'm not quite sure how it should be done today. Either the maintainer contribute a plugin inside Colamate, or if the, if the maintainer of the package should uh, include a test inside his package. The problem of putting the tests inside the package is that uh, um, it means the user has to install the latest point release before. Uh, um, uh, yeah, that's definitely a problem, although not necessarily. You could. Maybe this isn't the right place for design, but uh, you could uh, fit, if the tests were um, written in such a way that they didn't depend on the contents of the package, you could extract plugins from the new version of the package that you downloaded before you actually tried to install it. If Upgrade Advisor were in control of the whole upgrade, then that's something it could do. It does mean that everybody would have to use it or they wouldn't get the benefit, but that seems implicit. I would be very happy to have some feedback some from other developers what uh, of what what's considered to be the best way to contribute this kind of problem. Uh, I'll surely, po surely post on Debian default to make sure to have good feedback on this. That's yeah, probably many scenario. Um, I'm not going to go through post upgrade, but basically it's the same kind of you invoke it the same way and. It just makes sure that uh, all the standards package are installed, and then we can also contribute package. So um, if, let's say, uh, we have decided not to install APH 1.0 by default, but APH version 2 by default, we could just tell the user, OK, you are running APH 1, and just let we, we want to let you know that the default now is APH 2.0. It's really the same idea. 
In the next page, I'll use this convention. Basically, uh, I've written the version N of the distribution is a current install. Uh, N minus one is considering the user has already performed an upgrade. Uh, so ima let's imagine he had already performed from H to Lenny, and then his goal is to get to N plus two, N plus one, which is squeeze. Okay, so how do um, uh, the pre upgrade? Um, actually, I should have in inserted a, um, an extra slide. For people who want to understand how it works and who wants to contribute a plugin, um, for the pre upgrade, we are performing um, three sets of desk, tests. Um, the first test is uh, after upgrading to a release, as I said, um, we are suggesting you, the user to perform some, um, the release notes suggest, recommends to perform some modification to the current system uh, to get ready for the next release. I remember one which was uh, to modify the configuration in Grub, for instance. The other step uh, we perform is just to make sure the current system is in a sane state. Um, do we have broken package? Do we have some orphan package? Um, uh, do we have some weird uh, list of packages uh, which are used and which could conflict? Um, maybe some tests about the bootloader. Uh, if we know if some bootloader have, needs some sp specific attention. And also, uh, basically, we want to make sure that we will be able uh, to modify the kernel for the next release. Uh, because, for example, if you're running, a, running a hypervisor, you probably can't change the, high, the, the kernel you're going to boot in the next boot. So that's something we can warn the user about. The third part of the test is, as we mentioned, um, to test for known issues that are usually described in the release notes. Discontinued packages, uh, also those who are becoming non-free because this can be an issue for some users, which don't use non-free. Um, in the long term, I would like to be able to uh, warn the user about uh, unsupported hardware in the next release. I mean, for those we can guess, uh, based on PCI IDs and stuff like that. Um, also, we want to upgrade the user about those package, we will, which will require uh, substantial um, reconfiguration or some migration step during the upgrade. Maybe if you run a wiki or if you run a CMS, maybe that, so the, um, the, two, the upgrade script are not going to handle all the case, or maybe it just says that you have to perform some tasks manually. We can warn the user again. Is it clear about the, what the prayer grid is performing? What kind of test? I guess so. Okay, the so post upgrade mode. Um, again, uh, basically we test the status of the system. Uh, maybe the, the user has the impression that the upgrade went through, but Actually, there are still some package we are the old version. Those kind of hints we should tell the user. And also, if the user hasn't rebooted yet, we can warn him and say, you won't be able to boot from the new kernel. Uh, and the other part of the post upgrade part, upgrade um, action, is uh, again to uh, mention what is described in the release notes. So basically, there's really nothing really new. It's just trying to get a tool which can focus, uh, get the attention of the user of import, on important po points. Um, we were talking about writing script. I think it's probably the maintainer of a package which is uh, the most capable of writing a test script uh, because 
he knows exactly what has to be tested. And also, um, one problem is to know when, uh, in which circumstance or in which release each test has to be run. For many tests, which are uh, version specific, I've ended up um, using something which is uh, very tedious to maintain, but it's to actually detect the current version and warn the user based on the version of Debian he's running. I'm not doing the test based on the version of the package he's using. This is because it's much easier to run this test. Uh, but maybe some, the maintainer of the package may sometimes know that it's actually this version of the package which triggers the problem. So a maintainer would be capable of saying it's, if the user is using a version of FUBAR lesser than 1.3.5, we can warn him because we we're sure that the next version is going to be source of problem. Yes, Martin? It's sourced. So you don't yeah, uh, it's um, it's sourced. I can't remember where I ended up putting BNSH, probably just for Lintian or something like that. Um, I think it doesn't make sense anymore. Uh, yeah, because the package is source then executed, so it's uh, the benefit is that we can initialize some stuff when the package is source, and actually run the test later. The bin SH in there would help for check bashes and stashes and to recognize it as tested. Something like that, yeah. We don't do the bashing outside. No, just, no. Um, so the the, oh, here's my mouse. Uh, the function, the main function of the test must be named after the name of the, after the name of the file. So usually a typical script is like, uh, first of all, we test because if something is um, really known to be, uh, a test is legacy on a given distribution, we can just quit here if it's something before any, we don't have to uh, worry about it. Then uh, I've used uh, many macros, so we can precisely uh, have different kind of output. So the so next line should be title, with title, and uh, it's uh, also used for internalization of the, the script. And then it's, the so actual tests that should be made, and that's really up to the maintainer to decide what he considers to be sensible um, for testing. Uh, here we are testing for edge to any distribution. We had to, to, to make sure that the path of uh, update group was correct or something like that. And again, if there's a, I don't know how I can point all that. Um, so we use Gecko for internationalization, and uh, at the end of the line, we use a pipe with either ex alert, extra, or whatever um, uh, for, for to be able to output uh, with uh, um, machine in machine format. Inside the README file, I'm, not, I'm maybe not going to go through all them, but inside the README uh, file, there is some guidelines of how to write a script. I don't know if you want to see some more tests, but... Um, which one could be nice to see? Okay, here, to perform some tests about whether the user is pinning some package, 
I'm just detect the presence of the file and warn the warning if the file is here. It's very conservative way of testing. Uh, I didn't try to get inside the preference to detect if it's actually pinning anything. Um, what was in this one? Um, for some distribution, we had to test the kernel and, one, and tell the users that the kernel 2.4 is not supported anymore. So this is a quick test to perform it. Um, because some tests have, as we've seen, maybe all the tests regarding the status of the distribution are actually uh, run in both cases, if we are running a pre-upgrade or post-upgrade, so those tests um, uh, anything with an um, B is actually run in both cases uh, for pre-upgrade or post-upgrade. Um, I don't know if you have question and anyway I would like to have feedbacks for first first of all I think it's a very good idea to have that thing for and I will think the quality group may be interested in helping you or keeping track or um, what Colin said, to distribute the checks, I think it's also a very good idea. The main problem would be to encourage the package maintainer to write scripts uh, or if you already wrote a script to contact the maintainer and to include the, the checks into a, they pa their package or their repository. What I think what is needed is something light, uh, like an override. Uh, if I like to check a couple of machines and I know I have some false positives or, or false negatives, I want to disable some checks. So maybe you should uh, write it down and in the future that someone can disable checks. Mm. Oh. Um, maybe not disable checks, but um Maybe you can override the output in such a way that, I don't know, maybe there is a check that, that looks whether we have bin sh or something like that all over in the scripts. And, uh, and you don't want to disable that check entirely, but you might have a certain collection of files over there in user local or wherever it is where you're like, yeah, I know, that's fine. Those files are okay, but go and check it for everything else. Mm -hmm. Uh, but maybe it's also important to disable checks if they could break the system. Yeah. <laughs> is that Heisenberg? <laughs> this is really, uh, regarding the select, uh, being able to discard some checks, I was more thinking like the maintainer can just, the sysadmin can just grab the output, but we can implement something like that. And, and the other comment I had was about the distribution of the files, which Thomas also mentioned. Um, I'm, I'm one of the maintainers of the lock check package, and if you really want to try to get files into other people's packages, yeah. just you know, use your time differently, I'd say, because it's really difficult to do that. And uh, it, it's also, it kind of moves the control out into someone else's package. Let's say you want to do a format migration to 2.0 format, now you're going to be faced with uh, the same problem that Petter had, for instance, in the last three years trying to migrate init scripts. Um, now, Colin, you said something about Update Manager in Ubuntu. I think, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think Ubuntu um, Update Manager actually doesn't use packages in the end. You contact the archive directly, don't you? Um, well, what I'm trying to get at is that you might, let's say we have a release. We do release notes, we have a release. And then we find out that there is a problem, and we write an amendment to the release notes. I'm wondering whether there's something that we can do with Update Manager. Um, the, the, way, the way we do it with Upstate, Update Manager. Sorry. 
Is that better? The way we do it with Update Manager is we have a custom upload format that uh, drops a tarball into uh, the disks tree uh, so that we can update it post-release uh, quite easily. Uh, it's still a package upload to do that, but it produces something that uh, can be downloaded separately. That, uh, that contains the, uh, the, the sort of stuff that we might have to change post-release depending on uh, what problems we found. So it would be, I think in your model, it would be new plugins. Uh, whether Debian FTP masters would be happy with that, whether they'd rather that you simply upload a new version of Upgrade Advisor or something, I'm not quite sure. But uh, but yeah, that's uh, I understand Martin's point now. That's the way we we do it in Ubuntu. Uh, for obviously obviously the rest of everything has to be done with ordinary packages. The one thing that is a bit of a gotcha when you do that is that anything in that tarball needs to work with the uh, with the previous release. So we've had a bit of uh, trouble making sure that uh, things continue to work across Python version changes, that sort of thing. But uh, it's all possible. Mm. That's that's actually one um, one of the problem is actually to make sure uh, that the tests the user is, work, is running are, are accurate for the system. Uh, currently, the way it's done is that um, if the system if the system detects that, let's pretend the the package is named uh, version um, upgrade advisor version 1.0 dash Lenny or something like that. And it's in any, and it will refuse to test the system for the next upgrade. And uh, I intended to uh, use uh, point release to actually ship a version of uh, upgrade advisor which is capable to detect the migration uh, and not include. Um, so to introduce a new version of upgrade advisor in a point release. I think having it do it itself is likely to result in fewer weird bugs if you can manage it. Uh, it does require a bit more coordination, but it means you don't have to deal with uh, infinite bug reports from users who have forgotten to upgrade to the latest point release first. But, you know. Yeah. Um, I need to, to understand the process once again. Um, th let's say we have this package goes into squeeze. It doesn't really exist in Lenny yet, right? No. All right. Uh, let's say it goes into squeeze, and then um, so we have version 1.0 in squeeze, and then 1.1 because there was an update in squeeze R1, and then we release squeeze plus one, the next version, and that would have upgrade ad advisor 2.0 in it. Mm -hmm. um, now, before the upgrade, the pre-upgrade checks are the ones that are run from the old package. Yeah. And the post-upgrade checks are the ones that are going to be run from the new package, right? Right. So I'm not oh, concerned about the new... It's going to, the pre-upgrade has to be run basically before the upgrade, but it has to be a new package in the old archive. Okay, okay. So that actually answers the question that I was going to have, which is that maybe we should find a way to somehow make it easy for... You know, like the, the, the release notes start out with section zero, preamble, if you have not yet downloaded Upgrade Advisor and run it, do it. Something like that. So that we actually put, I, I don't think we, maybe the release team has, has a, a good idea how to do that, um, how to actually integrate that process, automate it. But in the end, I think it's going to be the user that is going to accept this, this offer. It's an, it's an advisor, right? It's not something that you need to do. It's an advisor. And Download it. Download the latest version. Run that. Mm -hmm. So th that that was actually the question I was wondering: how you were going to do the? Do you know yet what you can anticipate the upgrade problems are going to be in two years? And I would have been really surprised and amazed if you would it, know that. It's really. I mean, any advice of how to be to do it in the most sensible way is welcome because we have to deal with people who are going to upgrade from CD and maybe don't run the latest point release. Um, yeah, so, uh, eventually it would be nice to have it on the CD so the user can run the old version of Upgrade Advisor 
and get some information from the city or whatever. And uh, I don't think I've found a perfect solution for that. Uh, point release was not so bad, but I'm not sure what we should do. I've, um, I've got a question which is, I'm looking at the sample output you gave of running it. it look, if I think about what I would want to see, I'd probably just want to see in the ideal case, your system is okay and not checking this, checking that, and all that, that all that stuff. So I, I, su I, sp I suppose you're planning to work on that output a little bit in the future. That's a broken, is that a, uh, something which is broken is that the current design is, huh. the t is that the, test, the name of the test is always displayed. Um, um, and my, the other thing I want to ask is, um, correct me if I'm wrong, but doesn't Ubuntu's um, update manager actually drive the update upgrade process. Yeah, it does. So why, I mean, I can sort of see why you chose not to drive the process, but you've also cut out this helping a certain percentage of our users because they're not going to be able to run this and actually make any sense of the output as opposed to having to actually go fix things. So what do you think about that problem? About actually fixing the problem? Well, about the, I mean, about the question of whether we should have something actually driving the upgrade and changing what packages are, are installed and things like that, the dependencies can't handle the same problem that Ubuntu ran into. Uh, that's beyond my, the current purpose of the tool, but that's sensible to, you, you mean to actually perform the action, right? Yeah, exactly. Right. Um, it's a bit beyond the, the purpose of the current tool, but, um, and that's, I mean, the name says it all. Uh, but, but I think that we I, I would, and have to think about whether we want to do that. If this is actually a big problem we have to deal with, your solution is a good solution for some subset of our users, but it's clearly not going to solve it for all of them. Um, I suppose we could um, have some another set of plugins where the user can say, okay, I've run my prep grade tests. Uh, and the action that I recommended are okay and I actually perform the action or something like that. It, I, suppose, I suppose it should be possible to, to do it. I, I, I think about it, but why not? Uh, about the update manager part, uh, are you aware of that one of our small code projects is to port back update manager from Ubuntu? We write it partially so that it uses Python APT and so that it is not dependent on the on UX or that kind of thing, and uh, provide much more modularity, so that we can write distribution-specific module such as your tool in it. Um, that would be a way to extend the audience of your uh, tool. I, I'm not. Uh, um, I'm not really a user of Ubuntu, and I'm not aware of the tool update manager. Uh, it seems interesting, and if it can be used, yeah, um, we could uh, we could leverage uh, use update manager to perform the action, or, or yeah, I have to dig in that. Um, if I look at the, if I look at, at the upgrade processes of the season, um, yeah, definitely this is I've watched. Uh, my experience is really that. The, details of the upgrade boards, so that means which program is run when or, wh or what is the appropriate upgrade order, first upgrade say libc or the kernel or whatever, uh, is decided very, very late in the release cycle. Uh, and very, very late means something like two to three weeks uh, beyond the release, and we really see the issues coming up with one or the other way. And I can still remember that um, upgrade procedures were adopted uh, in the release notes while the CDs were building already. So um, don't expect that anything can be changed on, in packages at that point of time anymore. Yeah. Uh, when I was tracking the release of Lenny and adding patches, uh, I've added many patches when the release notes were actually written, which is really in the latest suite before the release. And I think when you point that it's difficult to get new package in in the archive is yeah, emphasizing the problem. Uh, I think the problem with we need the newest version before the upgrade maybe can be solved by a command that prompts the user for do you want to download the newest 
tests or checks or package version and then restart the uh, upgrade advisory command. So we, I think we do not need the newest version in the stable release, but a command that can download this, or maybe I'm not sure if maybe also volatile would be a good place to put new versions there. Uh, another thing what I want to say concerning why not only, uh, why not fixing the, the checks uh, that says there's something broken. I think um, it should really be an option to say, no, I only want to check it and do not fix it at all. Because as you said, you have some faults, positive, false, negative, and um, we could also break the whole system if we think, oh, I, uh, the checks uh, think there's something broken, let's fix it, but maybe they br break it then. So this should really be optional. Yeah, we, we could uh, uh, have some levels of maybe um, for those who are harmless to do and uh, perform some expert mode and by default, uh, I understand. I think that's interesting to point of view. I, I was going to raise the same point. I don't, I'm personally not going to be a person that is ever going to run a tool that automatically migrates my changes because one of the things that our policy says is ETC is not going to be automatically ch um, changed, right? So I build on that and I don't want that. Now, Joyce, your point is valid. Um, Ubuntu needed to update manager because the, the user, um, the target user is a slightly different one than Debian's. We might need that as well, but there's nothing to prevent us from providing another program that possibly builds on top of yours to do it. I, I just was uh, thinking about the. Okay. I uh, okay. Uh, I was just thinking about the the case about uh, you have to modify a file manually uh, after an an, an upgrade. So uh, your tool uh, let the user know uh, that case. Let uh, so uh, your tool tells the user that. Uh, uh, this file has to be uh, modified manually. Yeah. Um, so I was just wondering if, if there was a tool or if your tool uh, was uh, meant to do so in the future so that the, the user makes uh, an, a package upgrade in a 3H root em environment, uh, then it modifies the file. After that, um, Maybe he can test the file to see if it works or not. I don't know if it's uh, if we can do it. Uh, and finally, uh, there is a command or wh whatever that says that uh, uh, this file should be uh, automatic automatically uh, be mm, stored, be inst installed uh, in the in the in the new system after a uh, distro up upgrade so that we can automate manually modified uh, files in those packets that uh, don't have scripts uh, that up update configuration files. So I don't know if, if there is a tool that uh, kind of automates that or if your tool. For, for the change that has to be performed after the upgrade, I think it's really the, the maintenance scripts exist and post inst it's really the job of post inst to yeah. perform the action for after the upgrade. Uh, I mean, specific, so those actions that are specific for the package, um, it doesn't make sense to duplicate. And if the maintainer wasn't comfortable doing a modification in the post installation script, it's probably not, sens not sensible to do it in upgrade advisor yeah, either. Um, regarding the, the action that should be performed before the upgrade, um, as I said, currently it wasn't in my plan to do it, but... Um, uh, I, I'm, I'm not meaning uh, those files that are modified by post ends. I, I mean those configuration files uh, that the format uh, or the, the syntax of configuration files uh, changes so much 
that you cannot uh, write the script to, to migrate from old configuration to, to new configuration. So this file uh, needs to, to be modified manually. manually. I, I don't know. If, if the maintainer said he, for, for, for what has to be performed after the upgrade, yeah. uh, I really think we should rely on the maintainer's script. Okay. Except it, if it's something which is distribution wide, something like uh, you probably want to install the latest standard packages, you don't have this one, and we can't install it because uh, it's not APT's duty to automatically install uh, new standard packages. Uh, it's not um, APT's duty to to remove old standard packages that, you know, or, um, a stupid example. Um, but so, um, but some action has to be performed before the upgrade, and those could be used by an upgrade manager as tools. Okay. And uh, finally, my second and last idea uh, is... Uh, uh, regarding the CH route. This might be a few minutes left for the next talk we start here. Okay. Regarding the CH route, I think the problem is the space. We can't expect the user to have the space to do any test. Um, I, can maybe, I can maybe answer that very briefly. Um, the uh, one, one way that you can make that work that I know Michael Vogt was playing about with for Update Manager is to use a union mount uh, so you do the whole upgrade in the union mount. Uh, you say you you let you store it all. You store the diff in a temporary file system uh, on a file somewhere. And uh, if the the user gets even gets to reboot into that, find out whether it's working, and uh, then can do a commit. Uh, it relies on an awful lot of kind of shonky technology, but it's worth looking at. Hopefully someday we'll have some snapshot snap system in. <laughs> that will be easy. Uh, actually, there's one message I want to paste in, in, pass in this talk, and I've skipped over it, uh, is that the release notes are built uh, and, and are written re rather late during the, uh, the release. And there's one thing that could be done is to find a way uh, so we could use, um, I'm not making my for clear, um, currently the news.debian files uh, I have one script somewhere which is not in what we have tested which grabs all the news.debian files and puts them in the upgrade advisor so we are capable of saying you are running this package, the new package will display you, will have this news.debian file. Um, the problem is that many messages in the news.debian files are not so important, but some are very important, and it would be nice to have a notion of priority in the news.debian files so the user knows he should go. Yeah, this is important, and this is minor. Um, I think we could modify the one of the reasons that news.debian files use a Debian change log format is because that does have a priority field. And I think if you look at app list changes, it already probably orders them by the priority of the news item with high priority ones first and low priority ones last. Yep, okay, I have to check that. Thank you. I have one, one quick other thing. I think this is absolutely great. Um, I'm very happy that you're doing it, and especially in the way that you're doing it, um, the, the advisor versus the uh, sort of like enforcing the changes. Um, let's get it to the point where we can use it so that we don't have to make bash depend on dash, because <laughs> I think this tool could actually help us. Yeah. Um, yeah. I've all the scripts are tested to be bash and dash compliant, but... Uh, uh, no, it's very well, no, that's that's not what I meant. Not but your scripts, uh, we but know, uh, yeah, because this is something that has to happen during the upgrade. Mm -hmm. Make sure that you have a shell installed. Like, make sure that, and this is what. And I think for the migration, for the migration, one plugin that could be uh, implemented is to 
pass the local system for to check the local system for bash scripts and if the um, shebang is slash bin slash slash doing um, check bashism and warns the user about <coughs> failing check bashism. That's a plugin that we could implement for uh, local scripts. I, I probably didn't um, yeah, phrase you this clear, correctly. I'm just I was only talking about the distro-wide change. Like this is something that happens during the upgrade. Let's say that in squeeze plus one we'll have dash the default one or in squeeze. Um, then this is something that the upgrade advisor can actually help make happen. Not check the actual files, but help make that change happen on all of the installed Debian systems. Yeah, uh, yeah I didn't... Actually, I need to say that if we really want to drop a package from, from the essential set of our packages like Bash, there's nothing we can just decide in the last two minutes of this talk. No, but that's a plug in, yeah. <laughs> Um, thank you all for your attention and for your feedback. I was looking forward for it and I'm very happy of the feedback I had. <laughs>